But I hope you're feeling good this morning. God is so good. It's good to have everybody here on this Ignite Sunday. I want to pray and I want to go into the word. And as I promise, we'll get you in and out as the Lord says so. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that you're about to give. Decrease me so that you might get the increase. As the word which goes forth will touch the hearts, open the minds of believers to trust your word only. And that they will move in a boldness knowing that your word is true in their lives that they will keep their minds on heavenly things the things you said the things you say about them and not give over their minds to the influences of the world that keeps them in doubt lord on this moment in this day as we move forward speak to me and through me it is in the precious name of jesus yeshua your hebrew name let the church say amen. Our brothers and sisters, it's good to be here. And as you know, we've been talking about home improvement. How many of you have been doing your home improvement? Uh, it's springtime, and uh, are you improving in your spring cleaning? Are you doing some things? And, you know, I know we got a lot of stuff in the McCaskill home that we got to remove and got to upgrade now that Jasmine's finishing college in May. So God has opened up some resources now for us to take care of ourselves. For four years, we kind of had to sacrifice. Uh, but sacrifice is good because on the end, at the end of sacrifice is a promise. And that's something we learned last week that God's principles on the other side of that is a promise. But if you're led by your feelings, on the other side of feelings is empty. And so if you're led by your feelings and you don't lead your feelings, your feelings will lead you to destruction. Romans 8, 7 says, carnal nature is enmity against God, for it cannot please God. And so God has created each one of us to, to have feelings. But he did not want our feelings to lead our lives. When we live life in the spirit, we lead our feelings. We lead our emotions. And the biggest problem that we as believers have seen during this time is that we have allowed the influence of our feelings and our emotions to lead our actions. That is not the design that God has for each one of us. So who can admit that to some degree, some folks have been led by their feelings. In this pandemic, you've been led by your feelings. And let me tell you how your feelings are provoked by what you look at. How many of you have stood in front of TV and you've heard over and over again, folks say, oh my God, thousands of people are dying. And that's all you've seen. And we have seen people who have near and dear to us who passed away. That is ever present on our minds and so we know that there are things in the earth that's always tried to take us out let me tell you something about the believer believers we are in a world that is inflicting trauma on a believer that's why jesus came to set the captives free set the captives free from trauma 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 that the enemy is trying to impress upon your minds. The only power, and I'm going to leave you with this nugget, and then we're going to get into the word. The only power that the enemy has is to influence you to be a weapon against yourself. Some people will say that's getting outside the will of God. But I'm going to break it down for you. Doubt. Do you believe what God says about you? Are you, do you believe that voice in your head that says you're not good enough? You're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too this, you're too that, you're too light, you're too dark, your hair is this. You don't have what it takes to do that job. You want that job, but you don't have the qualifications. Let me tell you something about God. He'll put you in places you're not qualified for. And then he'll give you the wisdom to overcome. And you'll know it's God because you'll know deep down inside, I wouldn't qualify for this job or qualify for this opportunity, but God qualifies you. So are we gonna believe what the world says about us at any given moment? Or are we gonna believe what God says? This is the dilemma for the believer. And on this day, believers, you have to leave here understanding that what God says about you is true. This last year, 
has really been about increasing your faith. And so you should not be the same way you were when we went into this pandemic in this country. You should be wiser. You should be more forgiving because you saw people fall off that you did not think would fall off. You saw people purged. See, this has been a cleansing. This has been the best thing I can say to you as I get ready to get into the word is how many of you like wintertime when the, you know, it gets dark early? I don't think too many of y'all like that, right? I was talking to Lady Rhonda and we were talking about, you know, how she feels in the winter versus how she feels in the spring. And I explained to her that in the wintertime, it gets darker and the leaves fall off and so forth. So it's a representation of death. The spring, light, it's lighter during, you know, longer. And then you start to see things grow. It's called a rebirth. So you like life. You like light. You like renewal, rebirth. No one likes darkness. Some people do, but a believer shouldn't like darkness. So if you're feeling some kind of way about it getting darker earlier, really that's a sign of a spirit that's in you that says, I don't like darkness, I like light. I like life. So on this day, I want you to choose life and how you think, how you move about. Don't let the rulers and authorities influence your mind to not believe what God said. Keep your trust in God, amen? So we got a word today. It's good to have everybody here today and Judy and the kids and Dominique. It's good to have you. Uh, Dom, we pray for Dominique. She, she had, a, had to be in the hospital uh, and uh, just thankful to see you up and moving with the kids. And uh, we prayed for you, Dominique. We prayed for you and we're just thankful. You're a nurse yourself, right? So she, so this stuff is real, right? The stuff that we deal with, whatever she was dealing with, we won't put her business on the street, but we'll just say we're glad that you're up and moving around. I went over to the hospital thinking I'm going to come in and pray over my sister. And uh, Baptist Hospital said she only has one visitor for the whole day. So whoever comes in, that's her only visitor. Well, you know, Pastor Vincent didn't get a chance to see her. She wanted to see her mama. <laughs> And then she's like, I'm so sorry. No, nah, you want to see your mama. It's okay. I, I, I just want you to know that I made the effort to come to the hospital and let you know that I love you and I'll be there for you when you need me. And even if you, uh, anywhere you are as a believer, I'll be there for you when you call. But this morning, I want to talk to you. We're in part two of our series called Home Improvement. Home improvement. Last week, we talked about the foundation of marriage. And even for the single person who wants to be married, there was good information that you could glean from what we were sharing related to marriage. And so even for the single person who is trying to uh, find that spouse, this series will help you understand what you may have to deal with and how to overcome it. So I don't want you to think that because we're talking about marriage and you're single that you can tune out. I need you to tune in. I need you to pay attention because the information that you receive will help you. It's been said that a wise person learns from his mistakes, but a wiser person learns from the mistakes of others. I don't know about you brothers and sisters, but I would much rather learn from the mistakes of others and not go down that road. Amen. Amen. Now, some folks are going to be hard headed and they got to learn on their own. And you know what they say? A hard head makes us soft. What? Behind. Uh, so if you want to soft behind, you can go ahead and get it. But I just rather learn from other crazy folks who then went over the cliff knowing I'm not going over that cliff. But we're going to talk about home improvement. And today we're going to talk about home invaders. Uh, we got the foundation set. And in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, uh, Jesus talks about the believer. And the believer and what happens when the believer listens to his teachings. This is about the foundation and the foundation of Jesus teachings are the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And he says that the believer who who receives his teachings, receives his instructions is like a person who's built their house on a bedrock. You know about a bedrock, big old bedrock. You can't move that thing. I don't care what comes. 
It's unmovable. And so when you build your house on a bedrock, he says, when the winds come and the torrential rains come and the floods come in, that structure will stand in place because it's on the bedrock. But for the person who chooses not to believe the teachings and move in the wisdom of Jesus' teachings, it's like a person who built his house on sand. That when those rains come and when that wind blows and when the flood comes, that structure will be tossed to and from and destroyed. And so what we can glean from that scripture is that those things are going to come whether you believe or not believe. But the one who's a believer in what Jesus said and is practically applying it to his or her life, you will stand strong. You may bend, but you won't break. And so the very institution of marriage is the representation of God's relationship between us and him. He sent his only begotten son to marry us. And he is the husband man and we are the bride. And I am strong enough as a man to say I'm a bride. I'm a bride. I'll have my bouquet when Jesus come back. I'm ready, Jesus. And if I have to put on my little thing over my face like they used to do, Jesus, I'm here because I'm covered by the blood of the lamb. So here's what couples do. Uh, and this is the importance uh, that I want to point out today about home invasion, because while you have a strong foundation, you will have people who will you will have invaders to try to come in your house. And when two people want to get married, uh, most folks want to come to the church, ask the pastor. Will you marry us? Now, with me, what I do is I'm not going to marry you unless you go through at least four or five marriage counsel, premarital counseling sessions. And so they're faithful. They come and, oh, yes, we're in love. And oh, yes. And you take them through Ephesians 5. That's where we were last week. And we took them through 21 all the way to 32. And we learned some things about that. And oh, yes, yes. And we learn about some of the difficulties they may face. As a pastor, you have to really spot some of the things they may be unaware of and you have to do your due diligence to point those things out and show them the word of how they can overcome it and so they're 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 building their house on a sound foundation at that moment because they have come to get wise counsel but here's what some people do they get to that day and the pastor says do you will you love them cherish them in sickness and in health till death do you part and yes i do i do i do so they go before God, they make that commitment. So they've already seeking God. It seems like they're building their house on a strong foundation. But here's what they do. They don't continue in adding to by studying the word. Do you have a prayer life? Do you have a worship life? Do you, do you uh, assemble with other believers to help encourage you and hold you accountable? They come to the altar, but then they fall off from God but they want the house to remain strong. And what happens in that moment when you don't continue down the journey of seeking wise counsel from the word of God in a marriage, your house is going to be susceptible to what I call home invaders. When you're trying to improve your house, when you're trying to do renovations, you want it to get better. That means there's work to do. That means that you have to call the contractors if you don't know how to do some things. The contractors are wise people related to that particular area, a plumber uh, um, or electrician. You're not going to do it yourself. So guess what? You come and you learn and you grow and you let that person teach you so that you can be prepared for whatever comes. Many folks don't think they need additional wise counsel once they made it to the altar. So they fall off. They don't come to Bible study. And then you cannot tell me that they don't, they study the word on their own. Because when you're at home, let's just be real brothers and sisters. When we're at home, there's so many distractions. There's so many things that I've tried to look at my pastor. Uh, and I find myself enjoying service and then the phone rings. Or someone might say something in the house and I'm immediately pulled away. And so there's something about the intimacy of, of worship corporately that is an important component for the married couple, that you come together in certain places and certain times to get the word, to learn, grow, be involved. Are you doing things that edify God, not yourself? And so with couples, what happens is they find themselves now uncovered because they haven't matured in the faith. And now home invaders come in. 
Home invaders. What are home invaders? Uh, there are things in this world that you may not be aware of that are going to try to hijack your mind and have you see your spouse differently. And you got to be aware of that. But if you're not in the word, you're not watching and praying. You're not aware of what may hit. And so now when there are things that will rise up against the house, the word of God has already said, we learned in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, that these things will come. So it's what you are grounded and what you are rooted in that will help you overcome. And so as I think about Matthew 12, verses 43 through 45, Jesus talks about a house. A house that once had an evil spirit and that demon was evicted from that house and it went away trying to find a place to rest, but it could not rest. And then it returned to the house that it was evicted from to only find that house empty, kept and in order. So it began to it brought seven more stronger and evil spirits or demons to try to take over that house. Here's what happens with believers, those who are married, but this can also be applied to you individually. When we get delivered from one thing, we focus a lot of time on not falling back into that, but we don't do what we need to do to grow and mature in the word of God. So that house is, is kept up, it's in order, but it's not growing. And so when those other more stronger demons come, it can take over that house. The only way you can combat it is if you stay in your word and you grow to be able to peep out those rains, those floods. The word of God says the enemy comes in like a flood. You heard that before, right? So let me share with you what a flood means. Have you ever had a situation where you were overwhelmed in your thoughts and your emotions, your feelings? And you wanted to move because you wanted to do something. You were overwhelmed in that moment. But God says to be not anxious about anything. See, the devil wants to flood your mind with thoughts that are not of God to move in a direction that's away from God. So for the house where two people are together, if they are not pursuing the heart of God, the home invaders will enter and they will take over. Let me break it down to you. In the world, we deal with pests in our homes. You got ants, you have roaches, you have termites, and in some, to some degree, people are dealing with fleas. I wanna deal with ants for a second. Ants are a pesky, a pesky pest. They try to get into your house. Not all ants are meant to come into your house. Uh, you have the red ants, the fire ants that are outside and they build these big mounds. So when you step outside of your house into your backyard or your front yard, you have to make sure that there's no mounds because if you see a mound, you're gonna deal with that mound. That's the first thing you do. I gotta get some, some chemicals to take out that mound. But then you have the Argentina ant. And then you have the pavement ants. Both ants are similar. For the Argentina ant, it's a vegetarian sort of ant. It deals with vegetation. So if you have things unkept that's close to your home, branches leaning on your house, broken branches, other things, your, your exterior is not kept up in a way that will keep them away from your house, those ants will then find cracks in the structure to come into your house. And what those ants tend to do is when they come in to identify food sources and so forth, they can't hear. They don't have ears. They are actually moving with the vibration that comes through their tentacles, their legs. So what they do is they leave a chemical trail for other ants to follow. Demons. Some of you don't even realize you got demons in your house and because you haven't dealt with the cracks in your life, they have allowed other demons to follow them into your house. You think that your enemy is your spouse, but Ephesians six twelve says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers and authorities in high places. We've read that scripture so many times, Nathan, but why do we still have an issue with the person we see? The crack can be a vulnerability, how that person sees himself or herself. 
maybe I don't feel like I'm good enough. Maybe I don't look good enough. Maybe I'm, there's some inadequacy. The inadequacy that a person feels about themselves is the crack. And the ants represent the demons. And they come in and try to consume the person who's operating in some level of vulnerability. And if we haven't turned to God, if we haven't made God a, 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 the focus of what we do, those cracks will get wider and wider. I said recently, and I told my wife years ago, as I got revelation around who I'm supposed to be, I had so many cracks in my foundation. I was a good person, always a good person, but I had cracks and I didn't really pursue the word like I was supposed to. I tell people all the time, and I told my pastor Bartholomew or this, and he knew I was ready. I said, Pastor, the only time I would ever open the word of God is on Sunday mornings when you would give the foundational scripture. Now I gotta tell you, who tells their pastor that they don't read the word unless you're set free? This was after my calling. And I said, I need some instruction. And so what I learned over my life is you may want to do the right thing, but you're not empowered to do the right thing because you haven't taken the time to study the word to give you an understanding of what you're dealing with. So you have these big cracks in your house, both people, two imperfect people, but you have said that this person completes me. I, I, I love how it sounds. I, I do, I do, Judy. I, I love when people come together and there's love in the air and, oh, she completes me or he completes me. And that's really biblically incorrect. God completes us. But what two people do sometimes when they see the other person as the one who completes them, they evict God from the situation. And you make the other person the one that completes you, but that other person is imperfect. And then when troubles come, you want to abandon the person that God has approved, endorsed, and joined together with you. So you have the ants that are in your house and so forth. And the first thing we do when we see ants is we get some raid or whatever. I can just see Judy right now. She sees some ants and she, they getting out of here. They got to go. All right. So, so when you think about ants, those are low level sort of things that you see. When you see that colony, that trail of ants, you're dealing with it. That's the level of, of watching that we do. But then you got roaches. How many of y'all love to have roaches in your house? No one likes to have a roach in their house. And let me tell you something, boy, roaches represent filth. And if you got a cockroach, you know, they're going to get in from time to time because they survive around the moisture. Uh, and, but they look for ways and they'll come in through your attic and they'll try to get in through your house. Um, but whatever you do, don't let them have babies. You got them German cockroaches and they start having babies, boy, you got some filth up in there and it's going to be hard to ex exterminate them things. Those are a little bit stronger sort of pests. That's a whole different level. See, when you're dealing with demonic influences that are trying to invade your home, there are different levels, different levels. And so you have to grow in spiritual maturity to understand the different levels. If you stop at the altar and drop off from really seeking God, then those different levels will take you out. So when you see the German cockroaches, one of the things we learn about the cockroaches, young man, is that they, they're quick. If you, have you ever seen a cockroach come into somebody's house? I, I guarantee you, Lady Rhonda, who's, who may deal with some physical issues from time to time, if she sees a cockroach, she's going to run the marathon and do a world record. And Lord, don't let them have wings. <laughs> ah! I used to be afraid of them too. But here's what I want us to glean from the cockroach and even the baby roaches. They can move at three miles per hour. That's pretty quick for a little creature. But what that tells us is the bacteria and germs that they carry, they can multiply and spread quickly throughout the house if you don't get a handle on it. And so is the case for home invaders in the spirit, the demons that try to come in. You remember we talked about those seven stronger demons that come in? If they get in, then they'll start to create all kind of strife and chaos in your homes and have you going at it. It will impact your children and everybody around you. And so you have to be ready to deal with that level of intense attacks. But if you never take time to study your word, 
if you never take time to assemble with other believers to be held accountable and also be encouraged, if you think that it's all about what you want to do as opposed to what God wants you to do for him, you will fall to the cockroaches. And then there are termites. For the believer who has paid attention and have grown, this is for folks who've been in the church for a long time. Don't you ever think that because you've been doing church for 30, 40 years that you know everything? Because there's something called silent invaders. And those silent invaders will be will attempt to attack you out of plain sight. And if you're not spiritually mature, because let me tell you something, your age and how old you are don't represent how wise you are. There's something called being reborn. And when you're reborn in the spirit, I don't care if you're 80 years old and you just got reborn in the spirit, you're just a baby. And so now you've got to humble yourself and begin to grow in the word to understand the things that were not obvious to you as you grew older in age. So you got these termites. And if you know anything about termites in the South, uh, they, they look for wood and they want to eat, eat the frame, the structure of your house. And they send out swarms. These are the, the ones who seek out and look and see what's available so the rest of them can come. And those swarms have wings and they come in and, and they find a place to set up shop and you really don't see them. You have to have a keen eye to be able to determine if you have termites. And if you are really distracted, if you, you know, not paying attention to the lower areas of your house and whatever's going on, you will miss them because you'll think this, it's something else. That's what they do. They hide themselves on the inside of your house, but they don't want to expose themselves to you so they can continue to do damage. And that's what we have to understand in our spiritual growth for the couple is that you have some termites in your house and they're hidden and you're fighting the person right there next to you, but you got to deal with the termites. And if you don't know how to identify termites in your house, then you got to call in the termite inspector. Uh oh, brothers and sisters, let me translate that for you. When you are going through some stuff and you don't know how to fix it, you got to turn to some wise counselors to help you spot out the termites, the invaders that you did not see, but you were only focused on the person you did see. See, when you focus on a person you did see, that lets me know how spiritually immature you are because the enemy is trying to kill everybody, even you. And so he comes through our vulnerabilities, the cracks in our homes. He tries to take us out and there's different levels to the attacks, but there will always be attacks. And as we've learned in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, the person, the couple, the individual, who builds their house on the teachings of the gospel is building their homes, their futures on solid rock. So when those invaders try to come in through the cracks, you can cast them out in the name of Jesus. So you got termites, but you missed them. I was in my house and I was looking in the bathroom. I was noticing this little thing and I'm like, I see some wings. See, let me tell you something about termites and the swarmers. When they're exposed to air, they die. They don't like to be exposed to air. And so their wings will fall off and they'll die. So they stay hidden inside your wall and the outside as they eat away at your wood. I want somebody to hear me today. You may not see them. But when you speak the word in your situation, the atmosphere is going to shift and those demons have got to go. They have got to die when you stand on the word of God and how you deal with those demonic termites. That's what a power is, brothers and sisters. And as you dealt with the termites, for those of you who can identify termites, you have a higher level of spiritual maturity. You, you've, you've peeped out those demons that that other one brought back, try to bring back to the house to take over your house. You cast them out. But some of you don't realize that you got fleas in your house. Now, if you understand anything about fleas, fleas don't just come into your house. They need animals to hop a ride on into your house. They love warm blooded four-footed creatures and we have a love for our pets how many of you all have pets you got pets okay well fleas love your pets and they come into your house and then they hop off 
of the animal into your house, into all the areas of your house. And if you're not paying attention, you will have an infestation. How do you get the fleas out of your house? Because you love the animal. You wash the animal's hair, you, you know, do what you need to do to treat it, but you still have fleas. I don't know, but some folks have been in relationships with human beings who have an animal mindset. They don't have a human mindset. They don't have a godly mindset. And you've made your pet the love of your life. And now fleas are dropping off everywhere. They're jumping here and there. And you're trying to evict the fleas, but you don't realize the, the mindset that built a relationship with the animal. Some of you have friends who are animals. Animal mindset. I'm not talking about attackers or whatever. I'm talking about a mindset that, that has not been delivered a mindset that doesn't seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. You've surrounded yourself with four-legged creatures in the form of humans, and the demons that are on them are now going to hop off in your house. And you're unwilling to really deal with the creatures. You're trying to deal with the demons and fighting the other person in your house, not realizing that the people you led into your house who don't love God, they left some things behind. And now you're trying to fix the situation, praying those demons out, but you keep letting the animals back into your house. They have an animal mindset. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't need God. Let's not talk about God. Let's just talk about why he is doing this in your house. They start to influence your mind around how you see your spouse, and you don't even realize that they don't even have a godly mindset because you like being around them. So you got fleas in your house because of the animals you let in your house. You want the pest gone, but you got to deal with what, how the pest got into your house. Brothers and sisters, in Matthew 12, verses 46 through 50, Jesus tells us at this moment his mother, his brother, and his sister is looking for him. And he uses this opportunity to explain to us the importance of relationships and who we must walk together with. And he says, who is my mother? Or who is my brother? Who is my sister? He says, whoever does the will of the father is my mother, is my brother, is my sister. Brothers and sisters, some of you are walking with people who are not doing the will of the father or want your marriage to succeed. Some of you have allowed people in your ear who, listen, you shouldn't be getting advice from someone who ain't never been married. You're talking to someone single about married life. They've never experienced it, but yet you take what they say. They actually want what you have. You've got to be careful who you walk with, in agreement with. Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together unless they agree? And of course, we use that particular scripture to deal with relationships and so forth, but also relationships that extend beyond just a marriage, the people you walk with. How can you walk together with people who are unbelievers? As much as you love them, you're going to let fleas in your house and you wonder why you're dealing with what you're dealing with because you've got some demons in your house. You probably still got roaches and termites that you have. In the, and when you have all of those things in your house, you have a bunch of chaos. You have filth. You have so much going on. And if you just ignore them and that becomes your normal Folks ain't going to want to come to your house. Your home improvement is now home destroyed. Whoever does the will of the Father, it's about relationships. So you have to make sure, brothers and sisters, as much as we love somebody, it, the, people who, the people who we've allowed in our circles, if they don't have the will of the Father as part of their directive in their life, then you don't need to have them around. You, you don't need to allow them into that space where they can influence how you see your situation. What Jesus told us in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, he says that there will be things that will come up against your marriage. And for the single person, there'll be things that just come up against us. Don't you know that the enemy is attacking the church? But do you know who the church is? I want to hear you. Who's the church? You, the church, individual, 
In 1 Corinthians 3, 16, Paul says, don't you know that you're the church? What spirit dwells in you? You're the individual temple. You have been persecuted from the moment you entered the earth. So guess what? When two churches come together, two temples, doubly persecuted. Trauma inflicted on the mind. Cracks in the home because of inadequacies we may feel about ourselves. The great Maya Angelou spoke specifically to people of color. I have some people in here who are white, but this is for people of color, but even for you. Our greatest fear is that we're inadequate. Or our greatest fear is that we are powerful, actually, not inadequate. Our greatest fear, you are unwilling to walk into what God has for you because you think you can't do it. God says you can do it with him. All things are possible. And what the demons did not want any of you, culturally, anybody, is to recognize that God has always been with you. But when you're tuned in to other things that's not of him, those invaders will invade your house and destroy it. On this day, brothers and sisters, for those who are going through struggles in their marriage, you have to identify the pests that have invaded your house. You have to get back in right standing with God. You have not made him a priority. I always said, I love God more than I love my wife. I love God. I told her, I love him more than I love you. And if she's spiritually mature, which she is, that's a thing you want your husband to say to you because it does multiple things. One, it puts the devil on notice that you can't go through my wife to get to me. You got to go through God to get to me. So in that instance, I've covered my wife by saying, devil, don't even try to do stuff to her to get to me because my eyes are focused on the kingdom. But then the other thing it does is I can love her as Christ loved her. I can love her as Christ loved the church. And so guess what? Man, for a, for a person, a man or a woman to say, I love God more than you. If someone gets angry about what you just said, watch them, watch them. Couples right now are dealing with many different things. Infidelity, infidelity is a big one. That's one of the hardest things for a couple to have to go through. And Jesus knows it's tough. How many of you have ever been betrayed by somebody you love? God wants that marriage to work, but there has to be a surrender. The person who steps out of his or her marriage was vulnerable and made a decision that was outside of the will of God. But what it does to the house is it inflicts emotional damage. The victim the person who's having to deal with the consequence of another person's actions feels the flood that comes in. Am I adequate? Why did my spouse see somebody else as better? And the devil truly begins to wage psychological warfare against that person. And for that person, it's the hardest thing they've ever had to deal with in their life. This is about your faith. Ephesians 6, 12 says, your spouse is not the person you have to deal with. It's the demon that's on the person. It's hard, it's hard because most people who are trustworthy are easily trusting. But what we don't understand is that not everybody values what you value, even your spouse. But if you have said that your spouse is who completes you, when your spouse disappoints you, it's devastating. It's devastating because you say to yourself, how did I miss that? 
No, what you missed is you did not put God completely at the center and understand what he says about covering your spouse. We learned a lot last week about covering your spouses. And I'll just leave you with this. For the new couples who are getting married and the ones who've been married, God didn't expect for your spouse to be a carbon copy of you. Where you're strong, your spouse may be weak. Where you're weak, your spouse may be strong. When the two come together, you have to cover your spouse in the areas that he or she is weak in. It can't be all about you. It has to be about your spouse. And when you have a mindset of service and covering your spouse in the areas your spouse is weak, your spouse now has the energy to cover you in the areas that you're weak. The devil never really wanted you to get to that place. He never wanted you to have what we call that oval. When you get a ring, it's an oval. Two people who are working together in circular motion but if you don't do your part to cover your spouse, you will destroy the flow of that circular motion. And ultimately the enemy, what he wants to do in your life is destroy your marriage so people don't want to even believe in the institution of marriage. Brothers and sisters, on this day, I just want you to know, even for the single people, there's something you can get from this, that if you have areas of inadequacy inside of you that you haven't told anybody about, don't look to another person to complete that. You have to seek God and everything so he can fill you up. Then he'll show you the person that he has for you. But God was the one who completed it. And you keep your eyes and your focus on the one who completes the situation. So as I get ready to close this day, aren't you glad this morning, brothers and sisters, that you can identify the home invaders? Aren't you glad that you did not forsake in the assembly of believers? Aren't you glad that you do have a prayer life, that you have a meditation life, you have a worship life, that you are seeking him first with everything you have? I don't know about you on today, but I know what God has done for me. And in this season, brothers and sisters, as a pastor, as a, as a husband, as a... As as a father, as a friend, as an uh, employer, I, I'm just thankful for being free in my mind. I'm, I'm thankful for being able to look back over my life and see where God has brought me. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, the principles of God, he will honor them. There is always a promise at the end of his principles. And if you just hold true to what he says, even when it doesn't feel good, I can promise you you will overcome that no weapons formed against you will prosper you are more than a conqueror through christ which strengthens you i'm here to tell you this morning brothers and sisters that god has a plan for your life and you got to focus on his word he says in his word to keep your mind on heavenly thoughts you keep your mind on heavenly thoughts you can keep the invaders out of your thoughts brothers and sisters there'll be times when those invaders try to attack your mind but you're going to fight back with the word you're going to speak life into your atmosphere you're going to move as if you have life you're not afraid of what's coming at you because God has already said through his son that the rains will come the winds of life will blow the flood may come in but he will raise the standard the standard is his word will you trust him this morning will you believe in him this morning will you surrender to him this morning will you move in what he says even when it doesn't look like what you think it should look like will you trust him to never leave you or forsake you brothers and sisters this is the acceptable year of the Lord this he didn't say yesterday right now is the acceptable day of the Lord is it the acceptable day for you to be set free so what have you been dealing with what have you been dealing with in your mind? Brothers and sisters, this is that moment. Can I have some music? This is that music that I want you to hear, meditate on. And this is the moment. What have you been struggling with about yourself? Deliverance is for the believer who believes in what God says. Are you dealing with fear? 
Who in here is, I want y'all to stand up. Who in here is dealing with fear? Fear of anything. Be honest, you're dealing with fear. Anybody else dealing with fear? I got a word for the person or people who are dealing with fear, those of you online. Do you believe God and what he says for you? Well, he says, for God has not given the believer the spirit of fear. That's a home invader. He's giving you power, love, sound mind. So when you are dealing with fear, the only fear that's really important is to have the fear of the Lord. Then if you fear him, then you know his word is true. So if you are fearing at this moment, any situation, I don't need to know what you're fearing. I need you to embrace what God says. So I'm gonna ask you, can you embrace that God has not given you that feeling of fear? Do you embrace that? So take that with you. That's his word. Keep it inside of you. So when the winds of fear and the flood of fear and all of those things try to come up against your mind in any given situation, you remember God doesn't give you the feeling of fear. He gives you love, power, and a sound mind. So those things will come up against you but you have built your house on the solid bedrock of the gospel. That's all I want you to take. If you can take that, do you believe it? Take it. Deliverance is coming. He's going to work on you and the fear will fall away. I'm not saying that these things won't come at you, but you will trust his word when you feel it. You'll just shake it off and I'll focus on heavenly things. Who else is dealing with self-esteem issues? You're dealing with low self-esteem. So somebody here, you just raise your hand. I ain't asked you to come up to the front. Maybe, how, who's dealing with inadequacy? You're dealing with inadequacy. All right, all right. Sometimes, it, listen, brothers and sisters, deliverance comes to the believer who sets aside their pride and is willing to express what it is you're dealing with. The word of God says to confess our faults one to another. So for those who are dealing with what we just said, God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. All I want you to take away today, do you believe what God says about who he made? You're fearfully and wonderfully made. So when those feelings of self-esteem issues, self-worth issues, try to bombard your mind, and they will, because the enemy is going to fire darts at you for the rest of your life. The word is what deflects it, it bounces off. So just remember, when you don't think you look good enough, you don't think you're pretty enough, you don't think you have nice clothes, you don't think you have this and that and all of this, you remember that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what God said about you. He doesn't make a mistake. Who else is dealing with some stuff in here? We dealing with some stuff today. We dealing with some stuff. I, I just, depression, who's dealing with depression? Anybody else? Don't be, listen. I'm as transparent as they come. Sometimes those feelings of depression come in and don't you let anyone tell you that it doesn't happen. They come in at different levels sadness over and just just a lot of different stuff you could be feeling okay in one moment and in the next moment you're just depressed that is a spirit it's a demonic spirit it is a demon don't let anybody tell you it's genetics it is spiritual but it is real and you feel it if your mom your dad or anybody else dealt with depression you will deal with it too because it's a spirit that tried to attack your family. So be aware of it. We have what we call medical psychiatric terms, diagnosing things we see. So there are things that we diagnose, but behind it is a spirit that's trying to take your mind. So guess what? God says, and I need you to believe this. Do you, first of all, for those of you who deal with depression, 
when that comes, you still, when you cast it out, have to deal with how you feel. Don't ever let someone, some super spiritual saint, tell you, you shouldn't feel that way. The enemy has been attacking our flesh. But we're going to cast him out of our mind. That's the journey for us. So, for those of you who are dealing with depression, when that flood comes in, remember what God says. He says, I will never allow you to be put to shame. That's his word. I will never allow you to be put to shame. That I have a life that I want to give you more abundantly. Do you believe what he says? So here's what you need to do. John 10 and 10 is a scripture I want you to keep in your heads. Okay. John 10 and 10. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, but I have come so that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. When those moments come, remember that scripture and you speak it in your house. You're casting out the spirit. You're holding on to his word, but your flesh still has to deal with the residue. So what I've told people is in that moment when your flesh is now dealing with it, but it hasn't hijacked your mind, don't make any decisions. Let that feeling subside and then move forward in this world. How many of you are dealing with relationship issues, children issues, anything, children issues? All right, children issues. Now, we don't have to go into detail, but here's what I want you to know. This is God's word. You got to take it. You believe his word. Word of God says, train up your child in the way he or she may go so that he or she will not depart far from thy ways. You train them up by how you live. So are you living for Christ and demonstrating the love of God, healthy balance of discipline and love correction in front of your kids? They learn by what they see. So as long as you live it and apply it with balance, the rest God will do the work. Can you receive that? I know that there's been pressure that's tried to consume you because you have more responsibility, a whole lot more than you ever had before. Sometimes you feel like you don't have what it takes to really get this done, but you make it day by day. God says, do not worry about what's ahead just focus on today and this this is the practical piece for you don't worry about what may happen what whatever make a decision leaning on god's word when the situation is presented to you don't worry about what may be presented down the road each day whatever's presented to you that's when you make a godly decision to deal with that. Okay? The enemy wants to consume your mind with what ifs and what might happen and this and that. And it's a flood and it's real. But I want you to take that away. And I want you to restore it and re replace with what God says. Make a decision in the moment and live your life. Your best life. Do what you're supposed to do. Live your best life and leave the rest up to him. Anybody else dealing with anything else before we get out of here? Anybody else? Praise be to God. Well, we're about to get out of here. I want you to be blessed. For those of you who need Jesus and you haven't received him, this is that moment to do it. If, if you have not, I love how Pastor Cheryl went to that. That's great. That's all good. That's all good, Pastor Cheryl. This is the moment that I did not do because I had to go in this direction. This is how you receive the Savior. You can bring that on down, Pastor Cheryl. Um, if you want to receive Jesus and you don't know where you will spend your eternity, this is that moment. All you got to do is believe in your heart, confess this and say with me, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. I believe that you are the son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised from the dead three days later with all power. 
and now you sit at the right hand of the Father. I am profoundly sorry for embracing the thoughts that caused me to stumble and someone else. I give you permission to come into my life, to change me from the inside out. In Jesus name, amen. If you believe that in your heart, you pray that prayer, you're on the right path. For those of you who are online, make sure you get baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Find a good Bible-based ministry that will help you grow so that you can add to that strong foundation that we learned about today. And we're just thankful to have everybody here today. Welcome home, BGI. This is that opportunity to give. We don't pass the baskets around, but we want you to use your technology. And we also have drop boxes in the back of the church. But for those of you who now do through digital giving, you can give using Cash App. And that number is dollar sign BGI Fellowship or the Cash App ID, dollar sign BGI Fellowship. And then you can text to give. That's 901-244-4688. Again, that's 901-244-4688. Or you can give online at bygodinspired.org. And of course, we do snail mail. Uh, P.O. Box, this is for our online audience. P.O. Box 1042, South Haven, Mississippi, 38671. Go to our website, you can get that information there. To God be the glory. Uh, we will be having our Wednesday Bible study at 6.30 p.m. We also have our Saturday uh, worship service at 11 a.m. It's a different feel and it's only 70 minutes long. Come on in on Saturday, get in and out and go to brunch. And of course, we're right back here on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word today. Thank you for making us aware that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, that we can do all things through you, which, which will give us the ability to overcome the home invaders. Lord, we thank you for the word today. Now strengthen us, give us wisdom, watch and pray as you are instructing us to do and keep us protected from danger seen and unseen. It is in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. Go get your blessing, BGI. could invest in real estate, someone that had no experience at all, no knowledge. I've done something.